Risk Consultancy Signal Risk has published its latest uh, Coronavirus Resilience Index, and it makes an interesting reading. The five most resilient African countries to the coronavirus all share something in common. Joining us now from Signal Risks is the Managing Director, Nick Piper. Good afternoon to you and uh, welcome. So the countries that are coping best, what do they share? What are they doing? Hi, Jeremy. Um, quite simply, good testing, strong and appropriate civil restrictions, some degree of political resilience. By this, I mean a level of political stability and diversified economies. Where do we fit into all of this? Not too badly, to be honest. I think in the latest version, we are fifth. Um, this is largely, well, I guess here it's important to clarify that there is a discrepancy quite clearly between the number of cases and the ranking on our system. Um, even Donald Trump has alluded to the fact that more tests will get you more positive cases. So there's no real direct correlation between the number of cases and the ranking on the, on the index. Of course, the index measures how resilient a country is to a, a, an extended or enduring and severe outbreak. And with relatively good testing, continentally and, and relative to the world, with um, a, a, some political will that's been uh, shown by the administration, with somewhat appropriate civil restrictions, at least in terms of African countries, we're not badly placed. While it shows resilience, it also shows a degree of, of brittleness. If you look at those uh, five most uh, resilient countries, strong civil restrictions, reasonable existing health resources, political resistance, and stable and diversified economies. The reasonable existing health resources and diversified and stable economies um, doesn't necessarily apply to this country. That, I'm assuming, would be, would be where our weak point is. It is, but the, the index itself is only an African index. So as soon as you put South Africa outside of a global context and put it into an African context, things like our healthcare system actually looks quite favorable. Um, so by all means, yes, I agree with you. Um, healthcare resources in South Africa are poor um, on, a, on an absolute level. But when you compare it to our continental peers, we're fairly well off. Okay, so that's the background. Which are the five countries then that are really doing well? Um, I would say Mauritius and Seychelles are, are, are predominantly um, the, the, or usually the two uh, top placed countries. Island nations helps um, some degree of economic uh, wealth or, or support. Um, politically, they're very stable, relatively small populations, and they've embarked on testing campaigns that have been extensive. Uh, just by way of example, Mauritius has tested up to 14% of its population uh, compared to, let's say, 2% in the case of South Africa. Among the worst performing countries are those that have weak testing capacity, poor civil restrictions, low economic resilience. Who's battling? Burkina Faso, Malawi, and then the usual perennial um, uh, countries on the bottom of indices like South Sudan, um, Libya, Sudan. Um, the likes of those countries. So it's really no surprise that a country that was struggling to, to support itself or sustain some degree of stability before the virus um, would now be in the bottom of our index. But perhaps there's one or two that I can flag that are interesting. The, the one is Malawi, where we've seen a, an election that was concluded only recently. And because of the election and all of the politicking around that, obviously it was the case where coronavirus kind of came second in terms of the agenda of the state. Um, we've seen to some degree the same um, issue in Burundi, uh, where the rapid death of a president um, has kind of at least finally changed the response with the, with the new president being a bit more um, astute when it comes to managing the local outbreak. And then finally, Tanzania, um, which has predominantly or, or probably been the biggest disappointment on the continent. Um, president Magafuli in Tanzania has taken an approach where he has effectively rejected the presence of the virus or rather um, denied the presence of the virus in a widespread capacity and has done very little to prevent um, any further outbreak. A lot of comparison there with Brazil, for instance. Just a final one and a quick answer, if you don't mind, and this could cause some controversy. You said that democracies are not necessarily better placed than authoritarian regimes in countering the pandemic. Explain that to me. Um, 
take a, uh, Rwanda, for example. Rwanda is, is fairly well recognized as not being a full democracy. Um, the extent of control that the Rwandan government has allows for it to implement um, very strict and immediate um, restrictions and other forms to, to prevent the virus. So quite simply, um, democracies don't necessarily, or, or are not necessarily always well equipped for rapid uh, public health and economic solutions. Nick Piper from Signal Risk, thank you very much.